Okay, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for those that just let me know that the sound was okay. Um, and yes, we'll get started now. By my watch, we're okay. So again, thank you very much for joining and taking the time this afternoon to spend an hour on workflow. So yeah, um, for those I haven't met yet, my name is Nick Macon, um, for those. And if you do have any questions at any stage, even um, if you're watching this um, not live, you can always feel free to email us using ask at the nav people and um, if it's any question whatsoever about any version of nav at all, as long as it's nav related, we promise to get back to you. So yeah, that's the guarantee there. So if there's any question whatsoever, feel free to write to us at that email address and we'll get back to you. So, um, those of you who may know that this is our second knowledge hour. We don't want a fortnight to go on a introduction to Dynamics Nav 2016. We did hint at workflow last time, so we're gonna be doing that for the full hour today. In another fortnight's time, we're gonna be looking at events and extensions, and then we'll have some more going on as well um, in a month's time. If you feel, um, feel free to check back on the website by next week and we would have put the uh, the next two or three up there so you'll know what to come up and um, what to look out for. As you can see, we're also putting the recordings on there as well. So you can click that recording and go straight to watch on YouTube. So you can, we're gonna have that there. I'm gonna leave that there forever. So that will go straight to our YouTube where you don't necessarily have to register. You can watch that from our YouTube channel. So the aim of today's session is basically to in introduce workflow. One hour isn't enough time to delve deep into it, but we're gonna have a look at it today, and hopefully by the end of um, today's session, you'll understand a lot more about it anyway. Um, for those that are interested, again, feel free to write back to us, and we can um, send you some materials if you, if you want any further reading on it. But for those that are interested as well, um, all of the MSDN articles on workflow are actually really good. And for those that don't know, um, Microsoft themselves actually have a, um, a YouTube page. And on there they have a ERP channel and then Microsoft Dynamics Nav, I think that's the, the structure. And then there they do have stuff for um, setting up workflow, introductions to events. You've got all these videos about some of the topics we'll be covering in our, in our um, webinars coming up. We're going to have a look at um, how you can set up your own workflow in 2016. After that, we're going to trigger a workflow and we're going to see how that looks and feels in Nav. Later on, for about five minutes at the end, we're just going to touch on enhanced workflow. Um, that's probably quite important, um, only because we've had a, a product for about five or so years now. So we're just going to have a little look at that and maybe one or two, to different, for the, one or two of the differences. Hopefully, time dependent, we'll have a few minutes for questions at the end, so I'm gonna go through that. Okay, so just to get started, I'm gonna introduce what is workflow. And pretty much, what is this thing I've heard too much about? We'll try and answer that here. I know a four nights ago, we ran very, very quickly um, through workflow. So hopefully today, we're just gonna lightly jog through it all. So hopefully, it should make a lot more sense than it did last fortnight. It was introduced in Dynamics Nav 2016, for those that don't know. So it's only been in the product for about six months. Obviously that is a big deal because in previous versions, um, when people have been talking to us about workflow, it's often been for some companies um, bespoke customizations and stuff like that. So it's great that out of the box, with Dynamics Nav 2016, it comes with a workflow product. There have been previous attempts um, in older versions, such as approvals. Um, again, those uh, mechanisms have been replaced with workflow now. One or two of the pages are still there, so you, you'll probably be familiar with one or two concepts if you've used the old approval mechanism. But for those that haven't, don't worry, we can go through all that today. But essentially, what it does, it allows you to connect business processes or tasks that may or may not be performed by different users, if that makes sense. 
using Wareflow, you can also include system tasks, such as automated postings. Um, these can be included as um, separate stages in a Wareflow. We'll have a look at these stage, stages later. But the nice thing is these automated postings um, could be preceded or followed with a user stage or a user task, I should probably say. So just to kind of start to explain what makes up a workflow in 2016. The first thing we're going to look at today are workflow templates. And I definitely, for those that have 2016 or may have 2016 in the future, or you're even reading up on 2016, I definitely recommend having a look at the existing workflow templates out there. They are a great way just to get um, an idea of how workflow hangs together. There are probably a bunch of 20, maybe 30 workflow templates that Microsoft provide out of the box. And using those, you can understand how Microsoft envisaged this workflow or this function working together. So I definitely recommend having a look at those workflow templates. Using those workflow templates, you can edit them as well. So you can add or remove stuff to them. That'll be our first example today anyway, would be um, editing an existing template. So we'll go through that today, and that should give you some idea of uh, where you can get started anyway, when you come to look at workflow templates. A workflow can have one or more steps, so you can have multiple things that happen in this workflow. Um, we'll have a look at this later as well. We'll have a look at all these later, but just to introduce them. Um, a workflow step is made up of a combination of two things. It's made up with um, a workflow event and a workflow response. So based on this happening, do this. So that's what a step is. A step has to have both of those parts. What you can also have, you can also have a on condition which sits in the middle of a, an event and response. So you can say, when um, this thing happens, only when it meets this criteria, then do that, which is really nice. It's nice to be able to put that in the middle of it. Um, the next part of Webflow setup is approval users. It's something that has been in the product, I believe, and right and saying since 2013. Um, but again, now this is how you can, this is the page where you can come to set up how your um, approvals are set up. So you can say, um, if this person sends an approval, it's going to go to this person. If John sets it, if John triggers an approval, it's going to go to Phil. This is where you can do that sort of setup. Again, this was used in previous versions for the old approval mechanism, but Microsoft have just um, kept that there so we can reuse that now. One thing that's probably worth mentioning is that if you did have a bespoke customization done, if you had your own set of tables and pages and all that put onto Dynamics Nav, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to create a workflow for it. It probably would require um, developer customizations and modifications to do so. But we can talk about that later. Talk about that later as well. So, just to get started, workflow templates, as I've said, they are the best place to come just to have a look at what this workflow thing is. And that's where we'll start, start from today. I'm planning on spending about 10 minutes just to have a quick run through the setup um, in this PowerPoint, and then we'll spend the other 40, 45 um, in Nav itself. So hopefully that sounds okay. So as I said, out of the box, Microsoft have given us this whole set of workflow templates. And to be fair, they actually are really nice. Some of the examples include um, incoming document approvals, Purchase invoices, sales invoices approvals, again, the purchase order, sales order approvals, customer approval is a really nice one. That's one we'll be looking at today. And there's also stuff for general, general batch approvals. But it's a whole set, and we'll have a look at what's there as well. But again, it's always nice to come in here and have a look. Um, again, Wareflow has only been in the product for six or seven, seven months. So I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft add to this later on. One nice thing I found as well is that um, when you've got a workflow template, for example, a purchase order approval, you're probably best off just using that template when you come to create your own workflows in 2016 because, because that is a fairly fixed process. Nine times, nine times out of 10, you're best off just using that template and tweaking it here or there rather than um, going through and creating your own purchase order approval because it'll probably work out to be the same thing.
apparently um, my sound may have gone. So if anyone can hear me, can you just write back in the channel that you can hear me? That'd be great. But I've just had a message saying the sound's gone. So, okay, you can hear me? Great. Um, just thought I'd double check. Thank you very much. Oh. Okay, um, I've had a few people say they can hear me, so thank you very much, everyone. Again, um, much appreciated. So, we're we'll worried. The next thing is workflow steps, and don't worry too much about this. We'll have a look at this in about 10 minutes' time. I promise I'm not going to kill you with PowerPoints. I hate it as well. So, I'm just going to introduce some concepts here, reinforce them later on in software. At least then, when we go through it, you'll know what we're looking at, and then you can learn a bit about um, how, how they all link together. But essentially, this is what our workflow is in 2016. So you've got a workflow such, such as purchase order approval workflow, and there you've got multiple steps. So you can see that you can do multiple things in a workflow, which is really nice. It's not just one thing happens, it's this, this set of things can happen. Some of them have conditions, as you can see there, some of them, or some of them always happen. So um, in that example there, you've got somewhere um, they have a condition, so they'll only happen based on that condition, which is really nice as well. But we'll have a look at these workflow steps a little bit later on. But you can see that each step um, is a combination of at least, at the very minimum, a, an event and a response. Some of them may not necessarily have a condition, but you must have a event and a response in a workflow step. So these workflow events fairly important when we talk about workflow. So just in case you're wondering what they are, workflow events are basically, um, there we go. These workflow events are basically how workflows are triggered in Dynamics Nav. For example, um, approval of a purchase document is requested, or in that example there, a vendor record has changed, that will fire off the response. So in order to fire off a response, something has to happen in the system. And in that case, that is a workflow event. For those that um, tuned into last four nights knowledge, transfer, um, knowledge hour, we did um, introduce events. And for those that don't know, um, events are something else that were in introduced in 2016. And essentially, in layman's terms, they let you listen to something that happens somewhere else in the system, which across the whole platform is a huge, huge thing. So it means that as developers, you can make something happen without modifying that object. So that's just very simple definition of it. But it just means that this workflow mechanism just works because we have these triggers built in all over the system, whether it's you know, um, on insert of um, a customer or um, on release of a purchase documents. These events are all over the system, which means that we can create workflows because of it, which is really nice. Um, but one thing to note as well is that we can't just create a workflow using any event in NAV because there are thousands of events in NAV and we can add our own events in NAV as well. These events have to then be put into this workflow event table, which is just a setup table, but they have to be put there in order to use them in a workflow. So just in case you get a bit confused saying, I've created my events, but it's not in a, my workflow, you need to put it into a workflow event as well. Hopefully that makes better sense. Again, we said before that a workflow step requires two things, an event and a response. And these are just some of the examples of a response. Again, these are just what happens at each step. For example, on the right-hand side, you've got add a record restriction, approve the, um, the approval request, which has just gone out, or there's even one for, uh, sorry, there's even one for do nothing, which may be useful, maybe not. I'm still trying to think of an example when you'd want to do nothing but you may want to. So again, there's all sorts of workflow responses there, and they let us um, do lots and lots of things with our workflow, which again, is really, really nice. Yeah, so we just got a few examples there that we haven't got on the right-hand side, um, and we'll have a look at these responses in a second anyway. So approval users, so again, as I said before, approval users were introduced in 2013. So this won't be a new concept to everyone that sees workflow for the first time. Um, we just, instead of using this in the approval mechanism, we're now using it to control who our workflows go to in a certain, when, they, when it meets a certain criteria. And I'll talk about, talk about that later. But using that, um, that screenshot in the bottom, 
it should make a bit of sense. So you've got the user ID on the left-hand side. That is the person who triggers the workflow. And then you've got the approver ID, which is who do my workflows go to? So you can see there, um, when node.demo triggers a workflow, they'll always go to me. So that's where you can set up this one-to-one -one relationship where it's Noah's workflows go to me and you can chain these together. So I could then therefore have um, my workflows goes to John Roberts, um, John Roberts goes to Paul's, stuff like that. So you can use this approval user setup page to create um, a chain of approvals again, which works really nicely. We'll have a look at this later anyway. So yeah, it does control who the workflow goes to, how it's sent and when. We'll have a look at these um, notifications in a minute, um, but again, they are quite nice. If you didn't want to use um, approval users, you can just send a workflow straight to the notif sorry, straight to the salesperson or purchaser, or you can use workflow user groups. We'll set one of these up later and that'll make a bit more sense. But a workflow user group will let you set up um, a list of users to send this specific workflow to. Again, that's quite nice. We'll have a look at that. We'll also touch on enhanced workflow later, but for the time being, um, I think I've bored you enough with PowerPoint. I'm just going to jump, jump over to Nav. And there we go. This should look familiar. So what we're looking at now, we're looking at a 2016 version of the product. And the best place to start is we're going to go into the search box and just type in workflow. There we go. So again, we're in the workflow department now. We're in the workflow page. Some of these lists should start to, um, you should recognize from what we just talked about. We've got templates, steps, steps, user groups. This is where all the setup happens. We can, ha we can have a look at what workflows are already in the system by just going to the workflow list. What's really nice in, um, in, in workflow is the fact that they've separated them into these little departments. So if you were just um, looking for a certain um, workflow, you can have a quick guess where you think it might be. For example, if I was looking for a purchase order approval, I can just come into here and there's the purchase order approval there. So that's really nice as well. Um, if you had a workflow that was set up, you can use the copy workflow button at the top. You could copy something else and maybe you'd want to tweak it, um, disable the first one, enable the second one, just to test maybe an extra workflow step that you're just testing out before replacing the old one. So again, that's a nice nice feature. And you can see it's a very, cut, a very simple list, but you can just see here which workflows are enabled and which aren't in the system. Just going to edit this and we'll just have a look at what makes up um, this purchase order approval. One thing to note as well is that this purchase order approval workflow, this has just been created um, directly from a workflow template. In 10 minutes or so, we'll create our own workflow from a template. So, you, you'll, so you'll see the process from start to finish, but this is just one that um, was already there for us. So we've got workflow code, which we can use to uniquely identify later. Quick, let's see if we've got a question. Oh, sorry, um, is my, I've had a question about my screen resolution. Um, is my screen resolution okay for everyone or is it just the fact that the resolution is too sharp? Can everyone see okay? I can see fine. Um, unfortunately, there's not so much I can do with it. Um, but some people can see it fine, um, but yeah, I wouldn't want to sign out and sign back in and risk my resolution, unfortunately, because I'm recording this as well. So I'm just gonna jump off here for the time being. Um, but if you do struggle, just give me a shout. Um, so again, this is our this is our workflow. You can see here what the little description, just so we know what it is from the list. And then if I just go into here, you can see all the different steps we have, yeah? So again, the first one, so this is what, hap this is what happens. This is how the workflow kicks off. This is what happens to make it start in the very first place. For example, in a purchase order approval um, case, when approval of a purchase document is requested. Yeah, so as soon as approval of a purchase document is requested, this workflow will trigger. 
But not only that, because there are multiple purchase documents, because we've got purchase quotes, orders, invoices, etc. We don't want to just say every time a purchase document is requested, trigger the purchase order approval workflow because maybe it's a purchase quote. Maybe it doesn't meet that criteria. So we can enter this here. So we have this on condition section. So here we have two conditions that you can see. We've got where the purchase document type is of type order. So that identifies this document type away from all the others. And we also have where status is open. Again, we don't want to be reapproving purchase orders that have been closed. Yeah. So again, it's really nice to be able to put on a key. Sorry. It's really nice to be able to put a condition on a step just to make sure that things aren't getting triggered all the time. Again, you've got this um, then response section. So these are the things that happen because of the event that's just triggered. On some of the lines, you can see some of them are blue. So some are blue and have a little plus. Um, that just means that there are more than one workflow response against this line, which is again, it's very, very nice. It's nice to be able to have the ability of multiple responses to one event. I mean, it makes, makes workflow really, really nice. Um, we can just you can see these on the right hand side. We've got this workflow response fact box, or we can just drill down into them and take a look at what's going on. So the first thing we're doing in this example of a purchase order approval, we are restricting the record. And again, that's a that's a new concept in 2016 as well. So Microsoft have um, created this um, restricted records table. So it means that whenever whenever an entry is put into that table. Um, nothing else can happen to that document until the record restriction is removed, which is really nice. It means that at this point in time, the first thing that happens um, in this workflow is that it cannot be changed at all until the workflow is completed. Yeah, so that's, that's nice. And um, the second thing that happens is that we are setting a document status to pending approval. Yeah, again, it's quite nice. It means that um, when the page refreshes, the user that may edit that later knows that this can't be posted because it's still pending approval. Yeah, that's, that's quite nice. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. The third thing that happens, we're creating approval request for the record. Um, and then we've got a few fewer things there. The first thing we're doing, we are using an approver type, which we'll look at in a sec. And then we're saying, what approver, what approver do we want to send that to? You can also see that where we have a response here, we have this options for this selected response. Some of them um, do have options, some don't. So when we say record restriction, we, there's nothing else for us to do. Uh, Nav just does that for us. We don't have to worry about anything else. When we select this response, again, there's nothing for us to do. Uh, Microsoft is saying here they're setting this field to that value. We don't have any control to say set field X to this value. They're just saying you can set this value if you want. But then we get when we get to um, creating a approval request to a lot of things we can do here, which again, is quite nice. The first thing we're doing at this step, we can we can show a confirmation, mes a confirmation message. So we can make sure that the user wants to send this workflow. Yeah. You can set a due date. So you can say, pass in a day formula, um, like one week, just to make sure that, let's make sure this happens in a week if we can. You can delegate, which is nice. So you can say, um, if, it is, if it doesn't get answered after a certain period of time, we're going to send it to somebody else. Again, that's a very nice concept in 2016 in workflow. Um, and there are some options there. So you can delegate after a day, two days, five days, or never, and you just leave it open. Again, you can't customize this too much. You can't say, please delegate after 10 working hours or something like that. The options are as they are at the moment. But again, it's nice um, that the ability is there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the next bit is a prover type, and there are several prover types for Workflow. The first one is dead obvious: salesperson purchaser. So against this um, document, send the workflow to the salesperson or purchaser that's responsible for either this customer, vendor, etc. So that should make that should make sense. That's going to send it off to the person that's against the document. We have a prover. When we specify prover. We um, now will look at the approval user setup to work out who to send it to. We'll have a look at this in a second. The third option is a workflow user group. So as I said before, the workflow user group lets you create users or a group of users 
um, and assign them a sequence so that you can say, for this workflow, send it to this group of people, which may be different than your approval users. Again, that may be a little confusing, but I promise you it will be crystal clear in about 10 minutes time. Again, you do have subtypes under that as well. So where we've got prover, we have approver chain, which we'll look at in a sec, direct approver and first qualified. But just so that makes sense, we can press this open approval user setup. If I make this a bit bigger, this should look fairly familiar. So this is the same page we had on our PowerPoint before. And we have here on the left, we have um, a list of people that are allowed to create um, approvals. So these are the people that are, that, ha that are pressing send approval request on the documents. These are the people that are, are triggering the event. We have their salesperson code, or sorry, or purchaser code, salesperson purchaser there. And then we have approver IDs here. So we say, based on this, uh, this user, if John um, triggers a workflow, send it to Paul. Then if Paul has a workflow, send it to John. Again, that'd be, that'd be a never ending workflow, so we're gonna take that off. But you get the idea what you can have. If this person on the left triggers something, it's gonna go to this person on the right. And in a minute, we'll trigger one from Noah's user, and we'll see it come to me, just so you can see how these are set up. We've got these um, emails on the right-hand side as well, so you can have workflows that get sent um, via email to someone. Um, and we'll have a look at this notification setup for those eagle-eyed that may have spotted it there. We'll have a look at that in a few minutes' time. One thing that I actually forgot to mention before we came on to NAFTA, the last one or two bits of, um, how should I say, um, additional setup that you could use that we won't show today. Um, there are some setup that you can do too. Um, for example, if you wanted um, NAV to be sending out email notifications, then you're gonna want to make sure that your SMTP mail setup page is filled out. So that just can't, contains details of, of your SMTP mail server, the username, password, port, all that stuff that lets NAV send emails out. Yeah, so that should make a bit of sense for those. If you could, and there is a default job queue that's, um, that's, that comes in 2016 in Kronos anyway, that you can start and that will um, let those tasks run automatically in the background. Again, if you wanted to, to create a NAS against it, you could and you could set that to automatically be started. Um, and there are workflow user groups and we will take a look at those today because they are pretty important. So again, they're just some other setup that you may want to go for if you are setting up some quite advanced workflows. So, um, one really nice feature is that when you're laying out your approval users here, there's a approval user setup test function, which is a bit of a mouthful, but what it just means is that it will give you a report of the workflow chain as a way. So, if I select Nora, you can see that it's set to come to me, Nick Dalmakin. So if I just press this approval user setup, you can say, um, what workflow do you want to test? So I'll say, yeah, I'll test that one, that's fine. I'll preview it. And there we go. So at least we, at least we know that before we've created a workflow and then worried about after who it's gone to, we can have a look at the chain now. So we can see that, okay, no.demo, sorry, no.demo goes to Nick Dalmakin. Nick Dalmakin, he's the last person in the chain, so he doesn't go to anyone, yeah? What's really important as well is that the person who's the last person in a chain, they must be set to unlimited sales amounts, unlimited purchase amounts, yeah? So that just means that the last person in the chain will, will actually be able to, uh, sorry, pull that back. So that just means that the last person in the chain um, will be able to answer the workflow no matter what amounts it is, if that makes sense. If I, for example, untick this, and then I select Nora, and have a look at it again, we should see that, uh, oh, sorry, that's my internet connection. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, my internet, okay, sorry about that everyone. Um, I think my internet just dropped. 
So hopefully you can all still hear me. Is that can let me just have a look at this questions. Okay, sorry about that. I think everyone can hear me. My internet just dropped then. Sorry about that. I think we're all back now. Um, yeah, okay, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, okay, just to get back. So again, what we've done there, we um, unticked that unlimited sales amount, unlimited purchase amount, and I'm going to preview that. And that should come back with an error. It should say that you need someone to be set up as the unlimited amount. And there we go. It says there, um, it says there the user Nick Don making um, is either set up as a prover or he is set up as a prover. Again, it's quite nice. So again, it's a nice place to come here to check this will work. I'm just going to close this, send myself back to the uh, unlimited amount, and we will jump back. One thing as well, just before we leave this page. Um, you've got this notification set up at the top. So again, you can notify someone outside of NAV about the workflow based on an amount of time. So here we've got a notification type, for example, whether it's a new record or an approval. And then you can specify here, here when you want to notify them by, and we have a notification schedule. What's nice is that you can choose whether you want to notify people either instantly, daily, weekly, or monthly, and that's nice. So what that do is that will send them an email either every instantly, daily, weekly, or monthly with the workflow. If you do it daily, they'll get a pretty long email with all of the workflows. They'll then be sent a, um, a little table with what the workflow is, what the amount is, and then they'll get sent a, um, a link to the web client for that document per workflow, which it's, it's a nice feature, but if someone had... If you were sending out, for example, it's weekly and they could have 20, they'd have to click a link 20 times to go to the relevant documents to approve, reject, etc. So you probably want to use it um, instantly if you were going to do it. But again, it's a nice feature to have anyway. Um, the last thing we're doing in this case, we are sending an approval request for the record and creating a notification. So based on this, and this third step, it will then send that approval um, request so that the person can approve it. And that's what we'll do now. Yeah, we'll go through that. And one thing that you may notice as well is that when we have here the second line where we've got where pending approvals is equal to zero, but then we're moving the record restriction. So that means when everyone who has to approve it has done so, we move the record restriction so it can be posted, released, etc. So that's enough for me talking for the time being. I'm just going to jump to nav. I'm just going to restore my connection to the web client. It does time out every five minutes, or sorry, 15 minutes. And I'm just going to go to a purchase order. I'm just going to create a new one. Just note that um, in this case, I'm logged into the web client as nor.demo. So when nor.demo triggers a workflow, it, could, it should get sent to me, and I'm sat in the desktop client logged in as myself. Just if you're wondering. Actually, one thing I'll have to do before I do that, actually, which is important actually, you need to make sure it's enabled, otherwise, come on, your workflow is not going to fire, isn't it? So, just quickly edit that, enable it, and there we go. Just as if I meant to do that on purpose. Okay, so, um, I'm just going to actually get that document again. There's our one bicycle, and now I'm just going to send the approval request. There it is. The approval request has been sent. So that'll go through and trigger that workflow now. Yeah. So no.demo has triggered a purchase order approval. And now if I just I could, um, I'm not I'm got my I'm set up the email notification, but I could go to my email, see the email, press the link to open up the web client. But for the time being, just 
to be quick, I'm just going to go to the purchase orders and find it. Again, you could have a queue on your role center that had um, approval entries, and everything that is created is a is a approval entry in that as well. But for the time being, I'm just going to go to the page order document. I'm just going to edit it, and you can see that you'd come back to this document to have a look at to have a look that you're happy that that all the lines were correct. And you can see that at the top we have these three actions: we've got approve, reject, delegate. Um, I can delegate to someone else. I can add a comment, but just to be easy. I'm just going to approve it, and that's gone. Just notice there as well, the status changed from pending approval to released, and again, all that is done um, through those workflow steps. In the background, because we now have no more pending approvals, the record restriction is removed, and again, we've gone through that whole process now. So this page to order is now um, approved. We can go through that now. So that should make sense. Again, just a simple example. So that's one example, and I'm just going to show you how you can customize these workflow templates as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually I'm going to go to workflows, and I'm going to press this handy little button here at the top. I'm going to press this new workflow from template here. So I'm going to press that, and these are all the workflow templates we've mentioned a few times today. So you've got lots of them in here, and definitely are worth taking a look at. So I'm just going to take a customer approval workflow and I'm just going to press OK. There we go. Dead easy. If I want to, I can enable it and it should go through a customer approval process fairly, fairly uh, nicely. But I'm not happy with it. I want to change something. So that's what I'm going to do. And I recommend that as well. I recommend taking a template, adding one or two things just to kind of get the hang of it as well. It's quite nice. So the first thing I'm going to change I'm going to specify a condition here because I don't want to necessarily approve every customer. I only want to say I want to approve a customer when their, let's say, let's say when their credit limit is over a certain amount. So let's do that. So I'm going to specify a condition here. So I want to say where their condition is over 10,000, yeah? That's what I want to do. So that's going to be... Um, when a customer is requested over that limit, we're going to create record restriction and we're going to, going to go through all of these steps. One other thing I'm going to do as well, uh, where I've got here, um, when we reach no more um, approvals and the customer is approved, I'm actually going to create a notification. So I'm going to notify the salesperson in that case. So here where we've just got the one and workflow response. I'm just going to put add more responses and I'm going to just select one from the list here. Create notification. There we go. Now I need to say what user do I want to send it to? Who do I want to create a notification for? And I'm just going to say set, please send it to myself. Yeah. Again, it's quite nice. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change the who we're sending it to. So before last time, we used the approver and we use the approval user setup we had a look at to define who the workflow, um, who the approval entry is going to. In this case, we're gonna have a look at that workflow user group we've um, talked a little bit about. In that case, I'm just gonna change this. Oh, actually, no, no, I'm not. I'm actually, sorry, that's, it's actually in the first step where I'm doing my send approval request. We have a create approval request here, and I'm going to specify, sorry, change this from approver to workflow user group. Yeah. At the moment, that's empty. You can select one from the list, and here I've got this customer approvers here, so let's have a look at that. All that is, it's a dead, dead simple list. It's about as simple as list get. It's two users in the same sequence. But you should get the idea that you can specify multiple users and have them grouped in sequences. So the first sequences will have to be completed first, and then the second sequence, etc. What's worth noting is that there aren't any amounts on this, so it's not um, it's not sending it to Alice on this amount. Um, but if if it's um, over her minimum amount, just go send it straight to Nick. These are just sending it to a flat list of um, workflow users, which again is nice, but this that. Um, that's taken into consideration as well. 
So at this point in time, we're going to create this. I'm going to send it to node.demo and nick.making. In that case, I need another user to log in as. So I'm just going to do it from the tablet client. While that loads, I'm just going to enable this custom approval workflow because I've learned my lesson from last time. And here we go. I'm just going to press this button here and go to my customers. I'm going to select a customer from the list. Hopefully, everyone's seen the tablet client by now, but if not, it's a very nice client. And where we've got credit limits, let's just pretend I'm on a tablet. I'm going to set that to over 10,000, which would mean that I can now press this button here to create to set where, where I can get my actions and then send approval request. There we go. An approval request has been sent. For example, if I was to go to another customer that doesn't have a um, credit limit set, if I go to actions and send approval request, you can't because, because we've got that condition, it'll stop you doing so. Because in this case, it's not supported by a related workflow because it doesn't meet that first condition, which again, it's nice. So that's just to show you that. Okay, so at this point in time, it should have gone to two people. It should have gone to know that demo, and then it should go to myself. When it then reaches um, zero people and the pending approvals are zero, that means that the workflow is completed and that the um, customer can then have sales orders against them. So just going to nav, logged in as node.demo first. I'm going to go to customers first. And let's have a look at this customer. Apologies, I may have actually been logged in as the wrong user there. So while doing instead, I'll just do it from here. And I'll go to my customers, select a customer, and there we go. I can just approve that there. And now I'll go through. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense, the way you can use multiple um, types to specify who you want it to go to, whether it's approval user group, whether it's workflow user group. It's nice to be able to have that different level of control. If you were using approval user group, one thing that's worth noting is that you can't say send it to this um, approval user based on this workflow. It's always going to go to the one user based on who I, who I am. The only way you can say um, send it to a different person for a different workflow is by using workflow user groups. So I definitely recommend just having a look at them as well. Just quickly before we finish up, um, spend two minutes just looking at enhance workflow. Again, it's something we've had um, as the nav people in the product for about five or so years. And just because of that, because of that fact, we've got one or two features in there that um, you won't be able to find in standard workflow. One of the biggest things is that you can, um, as well as being able to notify people outside of nav, which a standard one can do, you can respond to workflows outside of nav. So you can um, select a response in a workflow um, which will then trigger the action in the workflow. So you can approve something from email effectively, which will do that in nav, which again, it's really nice. You can send file attachments along with a workflow. So if you send a purchase order, the person who's on their email can see what that document is. You can chain workflows together, which are really nice. So you can um, chain multiple workflows together based on different responses. And we can have complex routing parameters and sequences. So you can say, send it to group one and uh, based on this amount and then send it to group two, group three, etc. Just to show you very quickly how that looks in nav before I show you an example. I'm just going to jump to our enhanced workflow list and I'm just going to edit a page order approval. So again, we've got this page order approval, which will do a similar thing to what the standard one does, but just using our mechanism instead. Here we've just got what the table is, so we've got pages header table, and we can have group decision methods. So you can specify whether everyone who receives the workflow will have to approve, or whether just one person has to approve, whether everyone has to, etc. So we've got that ability there. And in this section here, we've got who do we send the workflow to? So we've got 
it's going to first go to nick.making, making then no.demo in different different sequences so before no gets it i have to approve it and here we've got the concept of workflow amounts so i could easily set us both in the same sequence but only send it to myself if it's between zero and 2000 and then send it to Nora if it's anything after that. So again, it's really nice to be able to say per workflow, um, a list of people, amounts, and we have a concept of routing parameters. So those routing parameters, just let you specify or direct um, workflow notifications to people that aren't based on an amount field. So it could be a department code like sales, IT, just other dimensions to pass through as well, which is quite nice. Lastly, um, we've got this thing here where we have configure email notifications. And here we can say whether we want people to be able to respond in email, whether we want to be able to send a document with the workflow as, as well. Again, this is definitely a subject for another knowledge hour, but just wanted to show you one or two of the differences and what you get back in the email. So if I just jump to this, you get something like this sent through. So you get an email from Nora in our case saying a new order um, has been requested. It's sent by this person and it's of this local currency, this amount. So you can specify all that up against the workflow. And as we saw before, we've specified um, a document to send along with it. So we can quickly have a look and say, do you know what? That looks okay to me. I'm happy with that. Or maybe no, I'm not happy with it because I thought that quantity was going to be something else. In that case, you can say something. So again, we've got these responses here. So whether I'm on my Outlook client's my phone or anything, I can just say approved and I can say um, looks okay to me. And we can just send that off. And that's it. That's our, that's all's done. That's our workflow sent off. So maybe we're not in the office this week. Maybe we're outside of Nav. Maybe, you know what, maybe we're not even a Nav user, which again, it's a really powerful thing. So the fact that you can send enhanced workflows to vendors to say, can you please check this item list? Or can you please check your expected receipt dates to make sure you're gonna be on time? You can do that and not have to worry about whether they're a nav user or not. These people are just contacts with an email address and we can send workflows to them and let them interact with us without being inside a nav, which again, it's very, very nice. One nice thing as well is that you can specify um, response workflows. So you can get something like this back. So if I'm the person that triggered a workflow, um, you can say you can set up a response. So I know that Nick.making and no.demo both said yes at this time, and they may have said something back to me or not. Again, this is just an old example I had prepared earlier, a bit like Blue Peter, so it didn't have a comment in the old one. But again, just something that can come back to the user, which is quite helpful. So uh, we've got some examples there of some of the things standard workflow can do and some of the things that enhanced workflow can't do. But we've gone through some of the uh, most important ones in that previous slide. So I'm just going to skip past this for the time being. So that's almost me push for time. Um, that really did fly, fly past quickly. So hopefully I've introduced workflow clearly enough to you. We've set up and we've triggered workflows. We've approved workflows and we've used the workflow templates just to get a bit of a head start. If we were going to create our own workflow and create our own workflow steps, that would have taken a little bit longer to do. We've also just introduced and just um, saw the tip of the iceberg with enhanced workflow, just to kind of highlight some of the differences between the two products. So thank you very much everyone for joining today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about workflow. Um, I've got a few minutes for questions. So if you do have any questions, feel free to write them in the questions pane. If we don't have answer, if I don't have time to answer them all, I'll always follow back um, later on. I'm just gonna to jump to the question pane to have a quick look. Okay, at this point in time, I don't think there are any questions. So if you did have any questions later on, then you've always got our email address there. So you can please feel free to email us anytime, whether it's about workflow, whether it's about any version of Nav whatsoever, feel free to email us. Also, we're gonna be putting this recording on the website straight after this. So you can send it on to other people. 
and feel free to check back on our website next week when we're going to put down another list of two or three of our next knowledge hours. We've got events and extensions coming up in a fortnight, so if you are interested in that, feel free to register for those. But again, um, thank you very much for taking the time this afternoon to join us and have a great weekend and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.